established. Can you hear me? <laughs> I thought we lost you for a second. Glad to have you back. It was said there's a secret location here. Some place with artifacts or ancient history. Carvante said we have about a hundred meters until we reach the ancient wall. The storm's moving fast and we gotta be quick. I would hurry up if I were you. Look at this place. I can't believe it's almost finished. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't expect anyone to be here yet. We don't open until, you know what? I apologize. Where are my manners at? I'm Coach Austin and this beauty is Heroes Museum. This is the first ever African-American virtual reality museum. This is a place where you can actually walk in and catch history in all of its phases. You have the opportunity to see Ma'at. You have an opportunity to see our veterans, her story. You get a chance to see veterans overall. You even have the opportunity to see that there were revolts that actually took place in history. Oh my gosh. I mean, look above, there's an actual airplane inside of a venue. like. Who does that? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Wait, you didn't tell any others how you found this place, right? Well, I guess it isn't hard to miss a huge building randomly appearing in the center of a town, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'd go figure. I guess it wouldn't be bad to give you one VIP tour, you know, Word of mouth is best form of advertisement, right? Why don't you get adjusted and meet me over here? At least when you're ready to start. Uh, we have a lot to look at whenever you're ready. You're standing in the center of history. By us acknowledging and sharing our ancestors' unspoken stories means that they are not lost. They're with us, Ashe. Ancient Africa was one of the most powerful, independent, and influential civilizations in the region for over 3,000 years. Although its civilization existed long before this period, it has survived and flourished since leaving behind numerous monuments, tombs, temples, and artwork. Even famous cultural advances in every area of human knowledge, documents and works of art that continue to be studied by scholars today, and more importantly, as you will see in our museum, the generational blueprints passed down in our DNA is still utilized today to celebrate life, all that we can achieve, and all of whom were visitors to its shores and beyond. This is precisely why it should never come to anyone's surprise that we did all 
of this. Take a minute to soak all of this up and meet me in one of our rooms when you're ready. Thank you for joining us in the Mali Empire. The Mali Empire used titles such as Mansa for their emperors. The first rule of the Mali Empire in the 13th century was Mansa Sanjata and he was called the Lion King. Mansa meaning king and Diata pronounced Jada meaning lying laid the foundation for a powerful and wealthy African empire. Now Lion King, go figure, isn't that a story that Disney okay never mind um, but everyone has a powerful story as I've already stated because he was born crippled at birth and his mother endured ridicule amongst her co-wives about her son's disability that became harsher after his father passed his father being the king that is so moms Simba however you want to call it and his sisters went into exile y'all know the rest he came back, handled his business, and under his reign, they secured additional territories through successful military campaigns, and the empire enjoyed a peaceful and prosperous period. He also was the great uncle of Mansa Musa, and we know who Mansa Musa was, the richest individual in the world. But no one knows about King Abu Bukhari Kieta II, and that's the most powerful thing, because Mr. Abu or Mansa Abu gave up his throne so that his brother can rule it while he went to go research the seas. He traveled the world. Education was more important than running his country. You never heard too much about him. So we celebrate you, King Abu Bakari Kieta II, and we celebrate you, Mansa Musa, as well as King. Mansa Sanjata. Welcome to the veterans. Thank you for coming. So let me go ahead and jump right into this right here. We have Miss Cathay Williams. We also had the Black Immune Regiment during the Spanish-American War of 1898. What's powerful about this, once again, is because European folks thought that black people were naturally more immune to the diseases of the world. They went into the worst disease-infested areas where our troops were doing battle to serve by saving them and helping them. How is it that we are more immune to diseases than any other folk? Hmm. We have Crispus Atux. We also have the 54th Massachusetts Infantry, which was in 1863. I've already mentioned Buffalo Soldiers, the 10th Cavalry Regiment of 1885, Harlem Hellfighters, Tuskegee Airmen, the 68 88th Central Postal Directory Battalion which was an all women battalion that kept the mail flowing for 7 million soldiers just to keep their morale going to fight. I salute all of you. I honor all of you. I thank all of you. something welcome to Egypt did you know that mr. Imhotep was the world's first doctor being the first to discover intracranial cerebral spinal fluid he also created the Edwin Smith papyrus 
which was a manuscript that contained explicit details of surgery procedures, almost 50 types of wounds and tumors, and categories of ailments that could be handled, fought, or nothing to be done for. He also was the father of science, medicine, architecture. In fact, he built Egypt's first pyramid. He was the father of mathematics, and he was an astronomer, as well as a poet, and so much more. Mr. Imhotep, I celebrate you. Let me just make some acknowledgments. Kings, Mr. King Tut, his name was King Tut Ankhamun. The most powerful military hero was Ramses II, the warrior, Pharaoh Tutmos III, the most brutal, Pharaoh Akhenaten. You also had queens. You had Queen Tai, you had the most famous one, which is Queen Nefertiti, who's the wife of Akhenaten. You also had the most powerful queen, which was Hatshepsut, proclaimed herself to be the fifth Pharaoh. And then we had the strong warrior queen, which was Queen Amina, who commanded an army of 20,000 men. Her story. Let me just go ahead and just pay homage. Queen Ty, Queen Nefertiti, Queen Amina, Cathay Williams. And let me stop right there. Cathay Williams, the first black enlisted woman in 1866. What's unique about her? She was the only known female in the ranks of the Buffalo soldiers and fought in the Indian Wars and many others. Her uniqueness was that when she joined, she joined as William Cathay, disguising that she was not a woman, but a male. All of that to serve and to fight for what we know as a historic fight. Thank you, Ashe. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. I was just revolts. I was just thinking in my mind. It should be known that our enslaved ancestors did not just engage in passive resistance against slaveholders, but they planned and staged hundreds of armed revolts against insurmountable odds in the fight for their personal freedom between the 17th and the 19th centuries. And although they may not have been successful, they underscored the cruelty of that peculiar institution and fueled a sense of unease amongst those whose fortunes depended on it, with the bloodiest and deadliest being Nat Turner's rebellion and the most successful being the Haitian Revolution of 1791. The unrest continued from 1791 until February 1794, when the French government officially abolished slavery in all territories. According to my scholarship, there are more than 300 documented revolts and or conspiracies in the history of our enslaved ancestors in the United States alone. However, I encourage you to do some more research of your own, beginning with what is provided in our Heroes Museum and share your information with us. Welcome to Did You Know? In this section, I'm gonna speak about Mr. Benjamin Banneker. Mr. Benjamin Banneker was not just a self-educated mathematician. He was also an astronomer and the builder of America's first clock. However, to me, it was his letter to Thomas Jefferson that shaped the dynamics of history more than any educator or researcher can truly imagine. 
Jefferson nevertheless speculated that blacks were inferior to whites in the endowments of body and mind. And one black could scarcely be found capable of tracing and comprehending the investigations of Euclid. However, it wasn't until he was presented with a letter and almanac from Benjamin Banneker, an educated black mathematician, that he began to reassess his earlier suspicions of whether blacks were capable of intelligence. By the way, in case history has not shared, Euclid, as in Euclidean theorem, taught in Alexandria, Africa. And not only did he teach in Alexandria, Africa, he was born in Alexandria, Africa. He was an African, not Greek. Hmm. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you, Mr. Banneker. Walk with me as we walk down the road of the heroes who walked amongst us. I just have to go ahead and just throw out here because these are so powerful. The letter drop box, uh, the stainless steel pads, uh, the torpedo discharger, uh, the cotton planter, ironing board, street sweepers, the eye protector, the wrench, the bicycle frame. All of that was made by African American. Horse riding saddle, pacemaker controls, lawn sprinkler, curtain rod, pressing comb, cellular phone, sugar refinement, baby buggy, dustpan, fountain pen, hand stamp, folding chair, so much more. Man. The doorknob. So I would have to say that anytime you think about the fact of when you see or use or observe something, you may want to ask yourself, who made that? space, cubes, and shapes. Well, we have a lot to do before Heroes Museum opens to the public. A VR museum, I'm talking game changing. Well, it seems the Blender and Unity team needs me now. Feel free to stay here as long as you like. Have a look around, you know the deal. Just try not to break anything. I'll see you around. thought we were going to give you the release date now? Ah, come on. It was just getting good. We still got work to do. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Eh, I guess what's the point of beta testers, right? Legend! <laughs> Alright, so here I go. Before history. 